What's up, Liron here, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this portrait of Childish Gambino, aka Donald Glover. What's up, Liron here, thank you for joining me in another video, and today we're going to do a painting process of Childish Gambino, also known as Donald Glover. Um, this portrait, uh, initially the picture I was uh, using to paint it, the one thing that really was striking to me is the strong contrast. Um, it was my goal to pass that through, that impression uh, in the painting process so we get very sharp changes from light to dark, uh, which I love and I think it makes it a, a little bit of an easier process always when there's stronger contrasts. Uh, so I hope you're going to enjoy this one. And with that being said, let's get started with the process. Okay, so getting started here, first wash, uh, putting a lot of yellows uh, in here. I want it to be uh, very representative of the light. Uh, now, when I thought about it again, I probably should have just left this area white because it is pretty close to white uh, in the original reference. Uh, but I do like to uh, convey some kind of color uh, even in my whites because usually they aren't. Uh, and usually blacks aren't completely blacks. It's more like a combination of the primary colors. Uh, so what I'm doing now, I finished establishing the light sides of the left side of the face and I'm not worried about my wash drying on me and this kind of approach I'm just working in patches and whatever the result is I'm gonna be happy with it um, trying to look at big shapes of shadow and light and shadow um, and figuring out where they are as you can see the area I'm working on to the right is a little darker than to the left uh, this part is a little more probably uh, the part on the left is a little more exposed to the light um, and you see I'm trying to figure out where the large shapes of different values are and put them in uh, as much as I can. Sometimes it gets very tricky, especially around the area of the eyes. This is where uh, I find most of the challenge of portrait painting really uh, comes to play because there's a lot of intricate shapes. Now sometimes you may figure out that the entire uh, area is in a shadow and then you can get away with drawing that large shadow. Uh, not not black, but just a, a mid-level, let's say, a mid-value. Uh, but then you still have to go back in the next wash and try to figure out where the light uh, is exactly. So now I figured I made a small mistake there with the, uh, uh, the top part of the eye. So I wanted to repaint uh, this part. And I'm slowly working my way around the pupils, the uh, eyelids, everything. Uh, just making sure that I avoid anything that to be left uh, light. Now everything there is in the shadow almost, so nothing should stay completely white, uh, but I'm going to do that in just a moment uh, after adding in some uh, other shadows and shapes, getting the shape of the nose here. Uh, the nose was relatively easy I would say compared to some other paintings that I did. Uh, most of my challenge really came from the lips for some reason, uh, and the eyes are always a big challenge getting that expression. Now a lot of people are scared because they look at their painting and, and I can look at this one right now and say it looks like nothing. Uh, you have to be able to soldier through this stage of nothingness uh, because you're still, the reality is you still haven't put in all the values, so of course uh, the face won't have a shape. And that's one thing that I really learned uh, recently, and that is, well, I learned it a long time ago, but I keep relearning it, uh, is that what defines shape really is the values. Uh, by looking at how dark or light something is, that's how our brain understands the reality around us. It's, it's that deep. Um, and so if I, if I take a black and white picture, you can tell, still tell exactly what you're looking at. If I'd have inverted the colors, it would look really strange. Uh, but if I uh, but if I just leave the values the same and make it black and white and you can totally read what's going on there. Now if you look at my current painting, there's tons of areas that are still white because I haven't gotten to them. Uh, the shadows aren't still fully defined, so of course it's going to look like nothing. You have nothing to worry about, you just have to continue filling in all the areas. If you get to a point where you filled all the areas in um, and you still, it doesn't look right, uh, I would suggest, I will give you a few suggestions. First off, take a few steps back from the painting and try to figure out what's off compared to the reference. 
uh, and that'll give you a better uh, overall view of the of the painting. Uh, another uh, suggestion would be just to go area by area and see if everything is in the right level. So you go uh, look at one area and ask, is it as dark as it should be? Is it as light as it should be? And you just go over everything, the eyebrows, the forehead, the different areas of the forehead, the left side, the middle, uh, the you know the the bottom of the nose, the top of the nose, everything. You want to go over everything and just figure out if it's the right uh, value. And that's it. Once you get it to be the right value, and you'll see the moment I put in the bottom of the nose, which which is really the strongest shadow. Um, well, all of the center of the face is full of stronger shadows because it, he's uh, lit from right and left. Um, you'll really get to see uh, the shape of this one created. Uh, now I want to give you a word or two about colors because that's like the second most popular question I get is how do I choose my colors? How do I know which color to use where? Uh, the answer is, and now I'm blurring that edge, uh, the answer is that I don't know. I It's quite random. What I do is I decide before I start the painting, I decide on a very simple palette of three primary colors. So I'll have a blue, a red, and a yellow. Um, in this case I'm using, uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'm using a phthalo blue, uh, quinacridone rose, or alizarin crimson, it's the same kind of thing, um, and then nickel azo yellow. Uh, sometimes I will, and notice how dark this area is, and notice how I'm not scared to put in that dark value. Um, so yeah, sometimes I'll go with French ultramarine, sometimes I'll go with cadmium red, sometimes I'll go with a bit of different primaries, but it doesn't really matter the color. The thing is, I choose three in advance, and sometimes I'll add a fourth kind of supplementary, <laughs> supplemental color, um, like a carbazole violet, or something, generally something that can get really dark in case I need it. Um, so I'll do that occasionally, and uh, I will just stick to these colors. That's all I'm going to use. So I'm just going to use them in different areas throughout the painting. Uh, generally, when I uh, am working on a light area, uh, relatively light area, I'll go with the yellows and the blues, but the dark, the uh, yellows and the red, sorry, but the darker it gets, I'm going to pull out more of blues, more of uh, maybe the violet. Um, and this is how I approach this. The color is super random. If you check out my little Wayne portrait, uh, the video I posted, I think, uh, a week ago, you'll see it's the same thing. It's the, the exact same thing. I just choose a random color and go with it. A bit of yellow here, a bit of purple there, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green. And all of my uh, colors are like that. Now, there is one thing you can do with your primaries, and that is you can decide on how to mix them. So right now what you see is mostly um, made of kind of purple, you know, the uh, red and the blue mix a lot. But I could go with more oranges, I could go with more greens, depending on what you want. Most of my portraits do have a bit of green in them, uh, here and there, uh, just because I like the way it looks. Um, and yeah, now notice how once I finished filling in all the white areas, it suddenly has shape. You can tell what you're looking at, which is rather nice. Uh, now you see this whole right area should be darker. Notice how much darker it is from the right side area. So I'm just going over that, strengthening it a bit, and then blurring the edges by wetting the brush, drying it on the paper, and then coming back with it. Um, there is a very subtle shadow there that I got, and if you look at the reference, you'll see this. Very, very subtle. And I wasn't 100% accurate, but I'm uh, getting close to uh, sufficient accuracy. And you're not always going to be. Now notice how when I put in the eyebrows, and uh, they add a lot of darkness, and, and just the darker area around the eyes, it puts all the rest of the face into perspective and you can better uh, realize its shape. Uh, now, as everyone, I'm also prone to the artist curse, uh, which is it's hard for yourself to see, uh, it's hard for you to see your own work in an in a objective light. So when I finished with this painting, I, I was actually wondering uh, how good it is or how much I was able to nail the similarity. I was a bit frustrated for a few moments because I thought I wasn't able to achieve the similarity I wanted. Uh, but then I showed it to some people and they were like, that's that's childish Gambino, right? And everyone immediately knew. So I was like, okay, I'm good. Um, so yeah, uh, a word or two about the drawing. And that is, there's no way around it. You have to just go at it carefully. The, f the human face is the hardest thing to, to draw, to sketch, to whatever. Um, I find that it's easier to do from real life. The, the 
few portraits I did do from real life were much easier to comprehend uh, the shapes and everything funny enough from uh, real life rather than from a photo. Um, so I really recommend you try that out with yourself in the mirror or with friends. Uh, it gets really fun uh, if you're able to practice from real life. Um, but in any case, you have to measure and get the, the constantly uh, get the proportions of the face you're looking at. Uh, the distance, the the relations between the length and width, where you place the eyes, their size, their length, the, everything. You need to see, like to really um, go over all proportions and be very careful just in getting them correctly. And it can be a nightmare. This is why I don't show the drawing process many times because um, it's just a nightmare really. <laughs> well, you know, it could be fun, but... Uh, yeah, and I'm still not that like I can draw anything, but the human face is still a big challenge. So uh, I don't I don't want to bore you with boring processes, um, honestly. But sometimes, uh, once in a long while, I will uh, show the drawing process itself. Um, so now I have a few highlights that I have to kill around the eyes. These are a little too light, especially the right eye that's completely covered in shadow. Uh, so I definitely want to get rid of that. Um, what else is interesting here? There's a few shadows around the nose I want to push to be darker. Uh, that seems to be uh, going to be something that will be really necessary. Uh, with the hair, it's a bit tricky. Um, I, I'm, I will try to exploit some uh, dry brush here. I went a little overboard with the value. shouldn't be as dark. So I quickly blended it back in. Um, now I'm getting that ear that I <laughs> ignored up until this point. Uh, and again, notice how random my values are. Uh, this is a really good uh, photo reference to practice portraits uh, because it has a uh, sharp contrast, meaning sharp changes from light to dark. The more gradual uh, of a contrast your picture has, the harder it, it will be uh, to draw it. And I see this a, a lot of the time. Uh, beginners start and they choose very soft uh, pictures where you can barely see the light and shadow. Uh, that can work for other mediums. It can work for watercolor as well, of course. But you'll have a much easier time if you choose your reference wisely and actually uh, do something that's a little more suitable for, for beginners in watercolor. Uh, so now I'm getting in the hair now because it has a very interesting texture and shape. Uh, I'm getting some of that uh, using a dry brush. Okay, and I'm trying to get really dark here. So I'm using very dry uh, brush strokes with very thick paint, uh, which is a challenge because it prevents the paint from uh, from flowing and then you have to work a little faster. Uh, but yeah, notice how I'm also imitating the values I see in the hair. So I'm trying to get it. Uh, now I went a little too inside the, the, the face, but that's fine. Uh, I'm just trying to get the, the values to be as dark on the right, which will require some more wet and wet, putting in, injecting uh, more paint onto the already uh, wet uh, area because it's going to dry much lighter. You know, watercolor always dries much lighter. Uh, you can do a lot about it. Uh, so sometimes you have to go really, really dark in order for it to end up being dark. Uh, and that's so just something you learn with experience. Uh, you try and try and test yourself and see if you are uh, right about the level of darkness that you chose or if there are inaccuracies. Uh, you only know after you did it. So yeah. Um, and if you're timid, you can always work in glazes. That's always a good idea when you're, when you're not sure uh, about your value matching skills. Uh, what I like to do, and I think I'll do it soon, is a value matching exercise. Just real quick, uh, you choose a photo, you isolate a certain area, and you try to um, match the value that you see. Uh, very tricky, very hard, but a skill that's the bread and butter of painting, I would say. Um, and lately, I've been really enjoying this approach of just matching the values that I see uh, without worrying too much about the technique or how well the paint will blend or stuff like that. I'm just kind of enjoying the, you know, just matching it or, or uh, painting it as I see it. It's very freeing. Um, here, hopefully, I'll fix that edge. It's a bit off. Um, but yeah, so now I'm painting the background. Now to paint the background, this is a good uh, trick. In this example, it's easier to flip the, the painting uh, completely uh, because what that does is you can start with either from the edges and work your way towards the bottom or like I do here, start from one edge and then rotate and go over to the other side. Uh, if you would have uh, started from the top to the bottom, you'd have two uh, you'll have one wash that separates into two on the right side of the face and on the left. It's somehow easier to start 
from the hard part uh, and then continue over to the to the easier part. That's what I find at least, uh, which is why I flipped this painting. Uh, I left a few highlights there, as you can see around the hair, uh, just to make sure that I leave some kind of a, a, a nice clean border of a strong uh, contrast around the hair. I exaggerated it a bit. I pushed it a bit to be uh, more than it is in the original reference and I'm aware of that, uh, but I'm still quite happy with uh, how it turned out. I don't think I, I overdid it too much. Okay, you can, you can have some artistic f freedom and license to change things around. Now I wanted to inject some darker values onto the background because I felt it was too light. I um, mean, yeah, this is it. Now I'm going to sign this one. And uh, in just a few moments, I'm going to show you uh, the final result. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and with that being said, we can wrap it up. So this is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and learned something new. I got a lot of questions about how I did the, the whole highlights on the hair. Uh, so you got to see this in action. It's not that complicated really uh, once you have a good work process. And a lot of watercolor painting just comes down to your work process. And if you know how to, where to start, what to paint first, and you'll be good to go and you don't have to worry about things mixing in a way you don't want them to or anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed this one. As always, I just want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it and it's your first video, don't forget to subscribe. I have tons of other uh, videos like this one. Like, share, comment, anything really helps. Uh, anything that helps me get these videos to more people uh, is greatly appreciated trying to grow this channel. Thank you so much and I will see you again in another vid real soon.